Hello, everyone. Um, our project is Traveling the Sheets, where we basically use computer vision techniques for optical music recognition. So our problem is optical music recognition, which has a goal of accurately and efficiently producing machine readable versions of sheet music. And this is difficult because we have to recognize variations in notation, reconstructing complicated music sem semantics, and there are basically limitless ways of arranging many notes on a page. So there's many different advantages for being able to successfully do this. Um, mainly is with uh, music education. So being able to actually listen to a score before you start practicing on your own instrument can really help the practicing process. And then stuff like uh, students learning to compose, being able to listen to their music instantly like that. Um, and then also with instant transcriptions for like researchers who need a lot of data to run more music models on. It's really good to have uh, quick transcriptions. So th there's a few existing solutions for this problem. In 2001, Bainbridge and Bell came up with the optical music recognition, which uh, described uh, stages for, for that. And there's also uh, deep scores, uh, which uh, has a semantic segmentation model for different symbols in the score. But again, these solutions don't have 100% accuracy and we decided to improve upon that and implement our own. All right, so for our approach, it's basically in four simple steps. So we started with semantic segmentation, being able to get every symbol that we want, staff identification, being able to section different uh, groups of notes, and then three, note placement, actually being able to name every note, and then finally we can string those notes together to get an audio file of our results. Okay, so for data set, we decided to use deep scores, which has about 80 gigabytes of music. We only ended up using one, um, but on the left, you can see some examples of what deep scores looks like. We ended up having some filters on this to reduce the amount of symbols to just have 12 very common ones. You can see on the right, our final results with that. So what's pictured is a roughly two-scale representation of our UNet segmentation model. The direction of computation is obviously left to right, and it takes, uh, as you can see, an RGB image as input and produces a probability map for 13 different classes as output. So for our first attempt, what we actually did was we tried to pass in the entire sheet music into the, uh, the UNet. And we found that because the things that we're identifying were such small little parts of the image that uh, the UNet basically all the time just predicted the background no matter the amount of epochs that we chose. Uh, so our attempt to, our second attempt was to uh, instead take small little windows of this image and train our network on that. And we found that uh, not only was the training time drastically reduced, but we also increased the accuracy by quite a lot. And because we only trained the model on small sections of input, that meant when we wanted to find a semantic segmentation of the entire uh, page of like sheet music, we would first have to split it up, pass each individual part through a model, and then combine it in the end. So uh, the last thing that we did is we compared our results. Um, you can see that through cross entropy, the loss for validation and our training sets were decreasing quite a bit over time as we used 50 epochs. And we also uh, recorded our average precision for uh, all of the different individual classes. And you can see that the vast majority of these classes are pretty high with their average precision. We did an overall precision of 81% for all of our 13 classes. So the, the next stage is staff identification, which involves taking a vertical scan of uh, all the rows in the image and counting the number of black pixels in order to form uh, an image of the frequency of black pixels um, as shown in the image. And here we can see where uh, those staff lines would occur so that we have a baseline for the symbols uh, in order to position them and uh, decipher what note it is. All right, so the note placement is where everything kind of comes together. So we started off with semantic segmentation and we can determine every actual note there and then we can uh, have every note as a CV contour. And then from that, we get the center of every note. And then with the center of note, every note, and then the lines that Ashman was just talking about, we can actually determine the note name based on the uh, distance from that center line. So once we have the letter notes, we can uh, convert them to uh, the respective frequencies using a lookup table and then store that in a MIDI file. Uh, and then we can uh, open that in uh, software such as GarageBand as shown. Uh, now we can listen to a test audio. Okay, moving on to further improvements we can make. So there's a bunch of things in music that obviously we can get to with our time. So being able to distinguish a lot more different symbols would be really cool. And then being able to be able to distinguish between an eighth note versus 16th note versus a half note, whole note, that would also be great. And then finally, the end goal would be handwritten uh, music recognition, which is obviously a lot harder because with computers, most notes look pretty similar, but when, when it's handwritten, we really don't know how it's gonna be. So that's our eventual goal, but that's all we could get to for this class. And thank you for listening to our speech. Adios.